That piece was called Star, named after my daughter whose name is Star. And uh, I wrote that probably about nine years ago when she was still in the womb. And I was trying to picture what it would be like uh, being in there in the womb, ready to come out into the world. But she's there all snuggled up and uh, ready to come out into the, into the big cruel world. Um, and that's the picture that I painted for that meaning. Now, today's uh, language and mind mastery video, I'm going to take us off in a bit of a different tangent. I come from a family of musicians, I've been playing music since I was a kid, and a lot of people have said, oh, the reason you're good at languages is because of music. Um, it's quite possible. I think that there is a big relation between the two and actually I see language and music as pretty much the same thing. We're creating meanings with sounds. For example, just let's look at the difference between you've got a minor kind of feeling sad and we're creating this sad atmosphere with music. Now we can go the other way and uh, go for the blues. feeling made with the same set of tools. We can do the same with language. For example, if I'm speaking Thai, I will learn a sound block, which is like a, a riff. Um, a riff is, say, in, in music, a riff would be... Um, the same thing, I'm learning riffs in languages. So, uh, let's say in Thai, Dao Lai, Dao Lai. Now, the words are Dao Arai. Um, and it's probably not correct grammatically speaking, but this is the sound block that's used in Spanish Thai. Dao lei. What do you want? Dao lei. And it has an emotion attached to it, it has a feeling attached to it, um, as opposed to Kun Kaap, Dao lei di kaap. What would you like, sir, or madam, or, or being polite, the, the, using the Kun Kaap, trying to make it polite. So, Kun um, Kaap, Kaap, this is a sound block, it's a riff just the same as It's a riff in language. So this is how I go about learning uh, languages. I actually learn riffs in the language just like we learn in music. Um, not only that, there are actual um, sound patterns, scale patterns. So that, uh, for example, um, is uh, I don't know in Chinese, but in if you in spoken Chinese, Ah, you can see the curve of the thing. Now people talk about learning tones and they try and learn each tone of each word and get it perfectly. But when I learn the language, and, or whether it's a tonal language or another language, it doesn't make a lot of difference because I'm just learning the rhythms of the natural language the way I hear it. Why? Why in Chinese? Um, looking at that curvature, now the same in music. Now have a look at this. If I'm learning a scale, um, that's, that's, a t that's a tonal or, or a pitch uh, contour. Um, if I'm learning a scale, I actually learn, in, uh, learn my scales and, and, and think of pitches, but I also link them into these physical shapes. So let's have a look at the, say, an F scale. Okay, now that's fair enough, and it's just, it's just, just G. That's the, now the, the differences between the notes or the actual scale, that's a normal major scale. But if we have a look at the pattern, have a look at this. I think of it when I'm playing, if you look at my fingers, it's a three white notes and a um, black note. Uh, and then it's three white notes together. So for me, an F, the contour of playing an F is this. It's that contour, just the same as contours in language. Um, now, we can do the same thing in a diminished scale. Have a look at this. The contour... Okay, so... Oh, 
let's do it in C maybe, it would be, uh, you could see more. Now that's the normal diminished scale, but have a look at this, the way that I feel it when I'm playing it, it's actually like a upside down U, and then that's a normal U. So the, the keys that I'm pressing here are C, D flat, E flat, E, which makes a U with my fingers. And then this, these other four notes, um, so that would be a G flat, up G flat, G, A, B flat, C. Okay, so I'm making an upward U and a downward U. And so when I'm playing that scale then, um, if for example, just playing with those contours and the feelings. I'm learning riffs with my with the shapes. I'm playing in shapes, sound blocks, and putting that emotion to it. And that's what music is. Now in language, it's exactly the same thing. We learn in sound blocks. We attach them to an emotion. They get a physical um, muscle memory in our mouths, in our bodies, and we're creating meanings. So um, maybe it's a bit out there and um, I'm stretching it, putting this clip out there. But honestly, this is the way that I feel about language is exactly the same feeling that I have about music. Um, learning a new language, speaking a language, is just creating meanings with this tool set to make sounds. So creating meanings with sounds, playing music is exactly the same. It's creating meanings with sounds.